find an easy seat if cross-legged is fine. So Kasana easy seat, that's great. If you want to be in a chair to start, you can do that too. Legs out, bent. Uh, if you want to sit on a block or a cushion, always do that. Do what works for you. Again, this is Bob Ross style yoga. <laughs> and you can have your eyes open or closed. So let's just go through a couple of thoughts. So again, today's yoga will be based on a Gretzko, a Sanrio Netflix cartoon, and I am Washimi, a secretary bird who is a strong and inspiring businesswoman. From Palm Mag, Carolyn Calabrese wrote that Washimi and her friend Gori, a gorilla, that is also a power woman, a high-level businesswoman, mentor and befriend the series main character, Retsuko, that red panda, and an entry-level worker in a big business. So Washimi and Gori care about Retsuko and take care of her, and they treat her with respect. They willingly share what they've learned instead of holding it back, and they offer advice and support as their friendship grows. And if there's one thing that Smooth Stream is all about, it's about friendship. And of course, the cheesy catchphrase from My Little Pony, friendship is magic. So friendship is in a Gretzuko too, and Washimi and Gori help Retsuko to push her to be her most authentic self. And most poignantly, they accept her for who she is, a crazy maybe not so confident red panda that loves to rage to metal. But as I mentioned, we won't be listening to metal. So hopefully you've got your calming soundtrack on, or if you want your metal on, go ahead. Or if you don't want any music, do what works for you. The encouragement of Gori and Washimi helps Retsuko to start down a path of self-acceptance. This practice will help you to focus on your own strength through breathing, grounding, and some balance. So if you weren't in your easy seat already, come to that seat and we're gonna do a couple of breathing exercises. So first everyone inhale, draw your hands above your head, draw them to your heart. And we're gonna do one deep breath and then we're gonna to inhale to ohm cause that's on the exam. So inhale one and deep exhale. <sighs> inhale again. Ohm. If you have an intention for today, please set it. And if not, I welcome you to take along today the intention for Ratsuko of I am strong. And now we're going to start our practice. So again, if your legs are comfy here, go for it. First off, we're gonna be doing our shoulder shrugs, neck rolls, our favorite part, right neck and shoulder. So for shoulder rolls, take your shoulders up and back and down and then forward. So I like to call this the four corner shoulder rule where you go and articulate all four movements of your shoulders. Up, back, down, and then forward. Again, in this type of yoga, go at your own pace. Maybe faster or slower. If there's a sticking point or this doesn't work for you, you can stay in that easy seat and just focus on your breathing. And then we're gonna come to stillness and go the other way. So back, up, forward, and down. Feel the difference in your shoulders. Notice how moving those four points and really asking your shoulders to do a lot to start yoga can take you. And do one more and come back to stillness. And if you want one big shrug, maybe just draw your shoulders and scrunch everything up and then let it drop. And next we're going to do our neck rolls, but we're not going to do full rolls to start off with. So just drop your head at first, roll it one way and then the other going at your speed, maybe really, really slow just to feel any kinks. And if you feel a kink, use your nose to kind of draw a circle and feel if maybe twisting it one way or the other makes it feel better or worse. Just rock side to side, finding your speed, finding where your neck needs to stretch today. And if you'd like, you can slowly do a neck circle. Another rule of yoga that I learned is no pain. The only thing you can do wrong in yoga is have pain. You shouldn't be comparing your poses to anyone else. You should be comparing what you can do today to what your body wants to do today and never go further than that. So come to stillness here and then take your head and tilt your ear towards your right shoulder. And maybe what I like to do is gently place that same side hand on your head 
and maybe reach up with your other hand, finding where you want to be to just get a little bit of extra stretch right here in the neck. I love these gloves because they really highlight where we're going with my little feathers here. Breathing into it. The breath is also a major focus in yoga. Begin to notice if it's coming from your belly or if it's not, maybe you can relax into that breath. Starting to draw it through the diaphragm. And gently, if your hand is above your head, let it go. Come to center and stillness for two breaths. And then go the other direction. Again, maybe planting your hand just at the weight of your hand. Don't press down, but just lay it on your head. And find if that other arm wants to go somewhere else and breathe into it here. Awesome. And then come back to center. And then you're going to inhale, raise your hands up above your head. Maybe just feel like you're pulling on a rope here. Just pull your arms up. Ooh, reaching, reaching, reaching. Use the shoulder blades here to pull your arms down. And then both hands up, but now lower those shoulder blades. Notice the difference from up here to really opening and lowering those shoulder blades. One breath here. And then exhale to one side, twisting, planting one hand on your knee, maybe one behind you. Find what works for you. On the inhale, maybe let that twist go a little bit and sit more up. And then exhale, maybe twist deeper. Inhale, come back up. Exhale, other side. Again, planting here, finding what works for you. Inhale to let up. Exhale, maybe twist deeper. And if you'd like, you can inhale and start a flow where you come up. Exhale, other side. Inhale up, exhale over, or if you're like me and you like it slower, you can stick to one and then the other. Find what works for you. Breathing here. Twisting as much or as little as you need today. No more. Whatever is available for you for this practice. And if you have a cycle, we like to do things evenly on both sides. So finish up both sides. And then we'll meet back in center. Take another breath here. Maybe roll those shoulders back and down. Inhale, hands back up. And we're going to do one of our themes for today. And that is that you are loved. So we're going to give ourselves one big hug. Just let it go. Maybe bend into it. Maybe rock back and forth. It's been a while since we've had hugs, so if you feel any emotions here, let them come. This is your practice, and yoga can sometimes release emotions. You are loved. And when you're ready, you can let that hug go. Feel where you're at. I'm going to do some seated cat-cow. I'm going to turn so you can see what I'm doing here. On the inhale, you're moving your chest up and arching your back and maybe look up just a little and exhale, you're rounding down. Your hands can be on your knees or legs, wherever is comfortable. But keep it with the breath. So inhaling open, exhaling close. Really feel if you can get the movement from the upper back here. Find your cycle. Find your pace. Find what kind of cat and cow you are here in your seat. Notice where the movement comes. Keep it in your upper back and shoulders. And again, if this is not available to you, you can just come to your easy seat and breathe. And then come to stillness. And we're going to flip over onto our table. It's a tabletop, all fours. And from here, plant your hands. We want your fingers to be nice and wide. Your knees down, backs of your feet touching. Exhale, go into your cat cows, but this time your tabletop cat cows. So from your Baramanasana tabletop, notice any difference? Maybe you're doing more with your lower back here. Can you keep it with your upper back? That was one of the challenges that I had during this class. I used my lower back too much. One more cycle here. And now if you need any movements, maybe twisting side to side, maybe wiggling your hips. Find that movement. And then come to stillness. Really feel the weight in your hands here. We're going to do a couple arm stretches. First by inhaling and raising your right arm up. Maybe twisting to look at it if that's available. 
And as you exhale, keeping the weight on your three, sweep your hand under to give yourself a side hug. Inhale up. And two, two more times. Exhale through. Inhaling up. And this time, as you go through, we're going to go into thread the needle where you're actually going to lay down on that shoulder if that's available. So you're sweeping that hand under. And the one that's on top now that's free, you can reach out in front. Or if you want and it's available, you can try and reach behind your back for a bind. Maybe even touching your legs, but listen to your body here. Breathing. Only what's available for you. Inhale, unwind, plant that hand by your face and then open up, lifting your head all the way back up again. And then plant it. Come to stillness again, equaling out your balance before we go to the other side. So inhale up. Exhale through for side hug on the other side. Inhaling up. Exhaling through. Inhale back up. And this time we're going to thread the needle on the other side. So sweeping your hand under, lowering your shoulder, planting your head, and maybe finding where that other arm wants to go. Breathing here. Seeing how differently it feels on the other side. And wherever you are, plant that hand next to your head. Unwind yourself, reaching up one more time. Come to stillness in your table. And from here, we're going to go into your first down dog. So that is planting your hands, tucking the toes underneath. Maybe you adjust where your hands are. And you're going to push your hips up. I want this to be a bent knee down dog from all of you guys. So keep your knees bent, just pushing your bum into the air, straightening your back. You want to look at your legs here. Keep weight on the fingers and toes. Your heels do not ever have to touch the ground. And then if you want, you can pedal your feet, maybe start straightening your legs, but just feel how it feels. Maybe you walk your hands out a little more just to see what works for you. And if this isn't available, you can just stay seated or you can do child's pose. Find what works for you. And then from down dog, once you're ready, we're going to walk our toes forward. Coming into our first forward fold. So from here, you're just dangling. But again, keep those knees nice and bent. Maybe you grab your opposite arms and dangle here. What we call ragdoll. Shake your head back and forth, no and yes. Let your neck completely go. Keep the knees bent and then come to stillness here. On an inhale, halfway lift so you're straightening your back so it's nice and flat. Hands can go to shins or thighs and then exhale, fold. Inhale, this time we're coming all the way up. And we're going to do one flow because, again, it is on the final. I don't really like flows, but this is what we're going to do together. So if it's available, go for it. If not, just have fun or sit down and take a break. So here we go. We're going to go into Surya Namaskar B, which is the version B of sun salutations. So everybody inhale your hands up. Exhale to chair. So you're dumping your hips, bending your knees, and almost trying to sit here. Hands can be out or at your chest. It can be very difficult, especially when your weight is different on your toes. So maybe try and lift your front toes and then fold. Good job, guys. We're going to do a couple of those so you'll get used to it. <laughs> or you can skip it. That's fine, too. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, step back. And here's where you have the option to do your knees, chest, chin, or if you have chaturanga. So you're lowering yourself to the ground. If you do knees, knees chest, chin, inhaling to baby cobra or up dog if you've got it, and then exhaling to down dog. That's your flow. From here, inhale, raise up your right leg, and maybe rotate your hips here. Three-legged dog, but seeing how your hips feel. Working on your balance, make sure your neck isn't too tight. Then push the heel back into true three-legged dog. Inhale, and as you exhale, step it through. We're going into Warrior one, so you're trying to find some balance. Your knee can be down if it needs to. Inhaling, arms up. 
and then just planting your hands and stepping back into your little push-up. So find your flow, whether that's your chaturanga or your knees, just chin baby cobra, and then find your way back to your down dog. In yoga, you do both sides, so other leg up, bend the knee, explore that hip. And then if you go one way, make sure you go the other way. And then kick that heel back into three-legged dog. Inhale, and as you exhale, step it through, planting your feet, raising up into warrior one, other side. Shoulders back and down. Just a breath here. Then plant those hands, step back, go through your flow. Find your way to down dog. I'm cheating, I know. Awesome. From your down dog, this time, you've done both sides, so you're gonna walk your feet forward, back to your forward fold. Hang here. Then inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Here we go. Inhaling the chair, so sweep your arms up, drop your hips back, breathe. Feel your balance, maybe your hips are high, maybe they're low. One more breath. Exhale, fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale up to mountain. Breathing here. Get some water if you need it. <laughs> All right, so our next step, I'm gonna turn and show you guys this. This is my own punishment because we're doing washimi. <laughs> so we're gonna do eagle. Quick demo of eagle. So from the self hug, take your right arm above your left, give yourself a hug as tight as you can and see if those elbows can cross. This is an option to do if you can't do eagle, if it's not available. Second option is like fire logs or like a Russian dance. But if you want from here, straighten your arms out, keeping your elbows together, really squeezing your pecs in and then rotate your thumbs up, like reverse karate chop up, then flex your hands and see if you can't get a little twist. So this is where you might get stuck and it's okay to go back to back, or maybe you can do that karate chop and come into full eagle. So that's the fullest expression of the pose and it's quite a twisty one. <laughs> so from here, we're gonna go into our chair and if you wanna do the other part of eagle, that is crossing your left leg over because your right's on top. And you can plant your foot outside and just squat into your chair here. Or if you want, you can even hook it around if it's available. So hold that just for two breaths. And if you have it here, you can actually push back into your warrior three. And wherever you are, we're gonna find our way back to crescent lunge. So your foot is back behind you. And if this doesn't work, you can also do like Airplane arms, it feels good. So find your crescent lunge and then unwind. Plant your hands, go through your flow and we'll all meet back in down dog. <sighs> Took a big breath in when you get back there. <sighs> and if you need to go to child's pose, take a break if you need. From here. We're gonna walk back forward again. And this time we're gonna do gorilla. So gorilla, in the forward fold, you're gonna put your feet under your hands, or <laughs> put your hands under your feet. And if it's available, you can actually use your toes to give your wrists a little massage here. But again, notice that my knees are not straight. I'm just standing here trying to get a little bit of a back stretch and a leg stretch and an arm stretch. And wherever you are, come to your forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, fold. Inhale, back to your mountain. So maybe hands up. And then come to stillness. And mountain, make this an active one. Really draw your shoulders back. Draw your knees up. Feel everything tight. And then let it go. Good job, guys. I know I'm having a sweat here. Okay, we're gonna go into eagle the other side. So again, self-hug, this time left on top. Stay here, do your fire logs, or perhaps straighten your arms, thumbs up, robot up. Find your half twist, or maybe that full twist. 
wherever you are. This time, if your leg that's on, the arm that's on top means the opposite leg goes on top if you want, or just sink into a normal chair. Find your expression. Breathing here. And again, option to kick back into warrior three. Hands can stay bound or maybe airplane. Find what works for you. And then everybody's going to land back in crescent lunge with your arms where you want. Front leg bent, knee not past your toes. And then exhale. Plant your hands. And this time, I'm going to turn this way. You're going to walk your hands to the middle of the mat into a forward fold. So let your neck go here. Relax where you are. Then inhale, using your core all the way up. Five-pointed star. This is a good one. Shoulders back and down. Maybe rotate your palms up. Feel the difference. Feel the strain. Notice what's working for you. Then palms back down. From here, cactus arms. Just one goddess squat. Lowering down, this time wide-legged squat. And if you'd like, you can do a whole bunch of these right now, but I'm just going to do the one. And come back up, pushing, pushing, pushing. Let the arms go, and we're going to fold again. If you would like here, you can walk your hands to your toes again and go through one final flow. This knees, chest, chin, chaturanga, dong, dog. Or if you're like me and you just want to drink, let's do that. Find that last down dog if you want that. Okay, so everybody's going to meet. Actually, we're going to meet at the top of the mat. So if you don't even have to go on a down dog if you're not there. But if you are, step, hop, or jump forward to the top of your mat. No more chair, I think. <laughs> so from here, we're going to do eagle walk or power walk because, again, washimi, right? So inhale your arms up. Exhale, your hands can stay at prayer. Find another bind. Or maybe you keep them down, but we're going to do some tippy-toe walks. So our power walk is up on your toes, using your knees, just like a crane or an eagle, lift it up, and then step slow motion backwards, baby steps, really slow. Feel your body here. Don't go fast, but stay on your toes the whole time. It might be more challenging than you expect. And if you wobble and fall, keep going. This is Bob Ross style. Do what works for you. If you are already at the end of your mat, start going forward. Or I'm going to give you a minute here to play with it. Stay on your toes. Really lift your knees up. Express. And then go the other way. Slow, slow motion. If you go really slow forward, it's also kind of challenging. Stay on your toes here. You got this. Wherever you are, find your way to the top of the mat. Staying on your tippy toes. I'm just going to demonstrate here. So you're on your toes. And we're going to go into a yogi squat. So wherever you are, lowering slowly, staying on your toes. Stay, 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 stay. And from here, you can drop your heels if you want. You can have a block underneath you if you want. We're going to give anyone who wants to try eagle because it's another, <laughs> or crow, because it's another bird pose, the opportunity to go into crow. This is not available to you. Try something else. Just sit down. Do a child's pose. I'll try and not embarrass myself, but I will give it a go. All right, <laughs> and wherever you are, keep playing with that crow. You got another 10 seconds. Get your water. We're all going to come to the back of our mats in Dandasana, staff pose. So you're sitting up straight. Your toes are flexed up, hands behind your shoulders back. From staff pose, just breathing. Maybe even lift your kneecaps. Pull them in tight. We are done working. So from here, we're going to do one forward fold. So inhale, arms up. Exhale, fold. Tell your legs thank you. If you want to bring some movement in, you can bring some movement in. Ooh. You're going to say, I learned too much from yoga teacher training, huh? And then slowly come back up. And then we're going to do just a one wide-legged fold. So maybe open up your legs. Again, if you want to block here or that paper towel rack, just fold over your wide-legged 
Wait, wide legged fold. <laughs> there we go. <sighs> Breathing here. And wherever you are, find your way back up to your to your staff pose, and we're going to go into one boat if you want, or we can just meet on our backs. If you want to do boat from here, you're putting your weight into your lower back, the sacrum area. You're just holding yourself up, using your core here. Maybe you straighten your legs, maybe you straighten your arms, maybe you keep them bent, maybe you do a couple of boat sit-ups. I am really not that mean, so you guys can all just meet back <laughs> on the ground here. All right. Feel how nice that ground is. Inhale, bring your knees up. This is apasana, 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 apanasana. I will have it for the final. Apanasana, knees to chest. Giving yourself one more hug. Your arms can be crossed as big or as small as you want, but this is your self hug on your back. And then exhale, putting your right leg down. I like to do an ankle twist here as we get ready for our side twists. So hug that knee in. Use your hand to guide your knee across your body wherever it wants to go. If this is as far as it goes, that's fine. Keep your shoulders on the ground here. No matter where you twist, how far you can express today, keep your shoulders flat. Breathe in here. It's like we should just be done here. I know. We got more to go. So inhale, draw that back up. And I like to take it across the other way. Just see how far it can open on the other side. Again, no pain, no pressure. Just opening your hips here because we did a lot of crossing. Let's open it up a little. Then inhale, pull it up. Exhale, straighten, and then pull your other knee in. Giving it a hug. And then cross it over again, keeping your shoulders down, maybe looking towards that opposite arm, going only as far as your body wants to right now. Keep it there, keep stretching. Fantastic. And on an inhale, you're taking that knee back up, maybe opening up the other direction. I think it was this one. <laughs> Opening it up. Oh. There, my hip popped. All right. Take it back in. One more hug here. And then you're going to let it down. Plant your heels by your bum. Nice and tight. So you can almost touch them with your fingertips. We're going to go into one bridge. So for bridge pose, plant your hands down on your sides. Keep those shoulders back and down. And first, we're going to do our hip exploration. So just barely lift your hips. Just barely. And see how it feels. And then let them down. Do that a couple times. Just barely lifting. I'm just showing you here. Just barely lifting. Just to feel it. And when you're ready, you can come into your bridge. If you want to come with me, you're planting your hands. Planting your feet, pushing down with your feet, lifting up through the hips, keeping your knees in, legs pushing inwards. As you see how far your chest can go up. It doesn't have to go to a full crazy bridge. It can go to where your bridge is. Maybe you have a small bridge or a low bridge or a high bridge. Exhale, let it down. Wherever you are, if you have any other movements, you can put them in now. Any other twists, balance, inversions, or I invite one more hug and maybe happy baby where you grab your opposite, or you grab your feet with your hands or maybe your big toes and you kind of spread your legs wide and just like lay here. <laughs> you can pull your feet in or rock side to side. Again, I can't see you, so do what feels good, man. You got this. <sighs> and wherever you are, find your way using any last stretches on the ground. For the best asana of the whole one, the savasana, the corpse pose, the resting pose. And all you're doing here is making sure you're nice and comfy. Again, maybe planting your feet nice and wide, 
Hands can be down, palms down for grounding if you want, or up to receive energy. I should be closing here. And you're gonna stay here for a few minutes as I walk you through. So as you're in your savasana, begin to relax your eyes, your forehead, the space between your eyes, and relax your nose and your jaw and your tongue away from the roof of your mouth. Take that relaxation as a wave along with your breaths, carrying it down your body bringing you into full relaxation. And I'm gonna give you three minutes of silence, or if you have that music playing, you have that. And if you need a blanket or anything to keep you warm, go for it. I will call you out of it in three minutes, so don't worry. Allow yourself here to relax and thank yourself for being part of this crazy workout, just as I thank you. And if you have any stray thoughts, just notice them and let them continue on like a leaf flowing in the stream under your bridge and breathe. Staying where you are here. I'm going to tell you one more story before we all wake up. From the cartoon, A Gretzico. And in it, Gretzico, that red panda, says, If I've learned anything, it's that life doesn't go the way you expect. There are surprises, good and bad. And sometimes you fall on your face. But even if it's awkward, even if it hurts, you keep going forward because when you do, you're already a little bit stronger than yesterday. Begin to bring motion back into your fingers and toes, wiggling them around, inviting circles into your wrists and ankles, maybe nodding your head back and forth. Maybe taking a deep breath or a yawn or a whole body stretch. Beginning to come back into the world. 
And as you're comfortable, roll to one side and stay there for a moment. As we end this practice, I'd like you to take these three lessons from Agretzico. First, be your most authentic self, always. Second, as our attention, you are strong. And finally, as always, you are worth it. Slowly begin to find your way back onto an easy seat. Your Sukhasana, eyes can be closed or you can invite a gentle gaze here. Maybe rolling those shoulders one more time, getting back into that nice comfy posture. And on an inhale, raise your hands up. Exhale, sweep them down one more time. Inhale up. And then draw your hands to heart center. Again, we will do two breaths, one to let go and one to ohm. As we do this, remember those intentions you set today and hold them with you as you go forward to tonight and the rest of your time. So inhale deeply and let it all go. <sighs> then inhale again. Oh. Raise the knuckles of your hands to your forehead the center of intuition and the light and love in me honors and thanks the light and love in all of you. Namaste. Thank you all. I really wanted to say protein instead of namaste.